upon a time in a village called Mahabaleshwar there lived a rich man by name Balvinder Singh he had the only son by name Yashwant who was inactive and non focused towards life he had no interest in anything so much that he did not even focus on his studies all he would do is roam with his friends all the day then one day son Yashwant concentrate on your studies now you are growing don't roam around with your friends all time you need to study now <laughs> papa why do i need to study at all as we are rich and should i do a clerical job by studying now why are you insisting me to study son yashwant knowledge is divine one should study to become wise but not to do a clerical job one should know wise ways to live and one can get it only through gurus there is a lot to learn in this world my boy and you should start paying attention all right papa i am not interested in studying and please do not force me to study please leave me alone balvinder ponders upon how to change his son as yashwant is arrogant and not ready to study meanwhile his wife amar beer comes there she sees him worried and tries to convince him please do not bother yourself he's our only son and we have pampered him a lot he's still too young it will all be good with the passing time that's true we pampered him as he was a small boy but now he is not if he continues to be a lazy bone i'm afraid of his future and he does not understand my intentions i am clueless about his future there is only one way out to get rid of this problem he must be away from us and his friends that is the only solution i see for now for him to realize the importance of life oh god to send away our only child can you stay without him we should take this tough decision for his good future till now we were pampering him but now when we ask him to change he sees us as his enemies so sending him away is the only solution our love should help him to grow and that happens only when he studies well and away from us this is what i think do you agree with this i like the idea but where can we get a teacher who can be patient with him to teach him properly hmm of course we have acharya vishnu sharma the most efficient teacher in a nearby village even my brother's son satbir was mischievous like our son but now he has changed a lot in his behavior and attitude Hence, we will send our son also in his ashram. Fine, you talk to your son and crack the deal. I will talk to Vishnu Sharma ji and take Yashwant to ashram tomorrow itself. Sure, I will talk to my brother and find out details. You start the preparations. Okay, I will. After having a word with Abhil, Amar Bir thinks of way to mend her son for the journey. Meanwhile, Yashwant reaches home, seeing her mother in a state of deep thought. He asks her, Ma. Did you have your lunch or are you waiting for me to turn up How could I have my meal without you my dear son we both will have it together I overheard you and your father talking about something this morning what was that about Ah ma you always pesters me to study and does not listen to whatever I say No dear do not say this you need to do something productive in life What should I do ma Nothing much son we have one of the best scholars in the world in our nearby village by named acharya vishnu sharma your father wants you to go there to pursue your education and i told him that you would never deny my desire because i am sure you are don't worry my son you need not have to study there but just go with your father and observe the environment and you come back if you don't like it sure ma i will go because it is your desire and to stay away from father He scolds me and pesters me to study all the time. I'm going only because you are saying and if I don't like it I will come back very soon. Yashwant decides to go to Vishnu Sharma's ashram only to escape from his father. Accordingly Balvinder sends a message to Guruji Vishnu Sharma about their arrival. Acharya used to live there with a small family a wife named Lakshmi and a small son named Aditya. Lakshmi Our zamindar Mr Balvinder is bringing his son Master Yashwant to our ashram he will stay with us until i make him a competent person all glory to god 
all your disciples have achieved big in life. They have earned a good name for themselves in society, all because of your education. And now I suggest that you please start with the same process with our son Aditya too. I think it's the right age. Oh, sure. Why not? I would love to have my son as my disciple. I will start the training from tomorrow. Next day, Balvinder arrives at Vishnu Sharma's ashram with Yashwant. He met Acharya and told him, "Namaskar, Guruji. Here is my son Yashwant, and I am leaving him with you in your ashram." Now it is your responsibility to shape him into a wise and competent person. Sure, Balvinder ji. In no time, your son will excel in all the areas of competency. Yashwant, you should concentrate on your studies. If you do what I tell you to do, you will become wise, and soon you will return home as a wise boy. Sure, sure, Guru ji. And Yashwant, meet my son Aditya. He is younger to you in age. but i am starting the training along with you so you both should enjoy learning now go inside the ashram after yashwant goes inside the ashram balvinder starts talking to acharya vishnu sharma and requested acharya my son is your responsibility from today i request you to teach some common sense and culture to him good god why do you say that balvinder ji your son seems well mannered acharya he is not the person as he seems he is lazy stubborn and does not pay attention to what i say and he thinks me as his biggest enemy hence we thought of joining our son in your ashram and training i'm worried about his future i'm clueless how will you change and deal with him i hope he behaves himself with you here don't you worry yashwant is immature he will gradually learn everything and i'm confident he will be responsible and competent in no time He'll be wiser when you see him next. I have full faith in you, Guruji. I will see you soon. Balvinder takes leave from Acharya and starts proceeding towards home. And from the very next day morning, training started for Yashwant. So, Yashwant, I am starting your training from today, and you will have to be prompt in your approach, and should do everything by yourself. That is the way of my ashram. You will have to abide by rules. Understand? Yashwant bursts in anger after listening to Guruji's words. In a deeply saddened tone, he told Guruji, "Guruji, you are also like father, always dictating me what to do and when to do. I came here to stay away from such instructions. I don't want to do anything." Is that so? But you cannot shout at me like this way. This is not your house. and you will have to face the music if you do not follow my instructions understand boy acharya said in a stern voice yashwant follows half heartedly whatever the guru instructs as he does not want to go back to his father that's why there was no other way out then one fine day yashwant i asked you to by heart a shlok yesterday and reproduce the same today did you do that guru ji I have not learnt it yet. Okay. Don't you understand what I say? I reiterated that you would have to face a punishment if you do not follow what I say and read aloud the shlok for hundred times today, and that is your punishment. And this became an everyday routine. However, Yashwan started to follow whatever Acharya said. Over the period, he developed hatred towards this guru. thinking that his guru is consciously forcing him to do all nonsense and his guru does not love him at all this routine follows for a couple of more days then one fine day yashwant we are going for a marriage to a nearby village take care of yourself and aditya ask him to by heart all the shlokas if you do not remind him about the shlokas he will play all throughout the day play outside and waste his time I don't want that happening. All right. Will you do that? I will take care, Guru ji. Giving Aditya's responsibility to Yashwant, Vishnu Sharma leaves along with his wife to nearby village for a marriage, and Yashwant deems it as a respect to take up the responsibility of his guru's son. He said, "Listen, Aditya. Guru ji has assigned me your responsibility, so you should obey whatever I say until he comes back. Do you understand that?" Tell me. Yes, my dear brother. 
but I want to play now. So please leave me and let me play a little. No, my dear little brother, I cannot allow you to play until you buy hard all the shlokas for the day. Yashwant tries his level best to mend Aditya and let him learn the shloka by showing his authority. But even after four days, Aditya could not get the shloka by heart as his entire concentration was on playing. Evidently, Yashwant was very upset about this. What is this, Aditya? How come you are unable to learn a small shlok despite being the son to a scholar? If you do not read the shlok now, then I will have to punish you. So please read it, Aditya, brother. Nothing is going into my head. Please leave me. Let me play. This way, Aditya does not pay attention to Yashwant's words and does not concentrate on his studies and plays all the time. However, Yashwant wants to try his luck for one final time. So he calls up Aditya and tells him, Aditya, if you do not recite this shlok today, I will punish you. Understand? You do whatever you want. I cannot study, and I will not recite the shlok. Hearing upon such an arrogant answer, Yashwant loses his temper and slaps Aditya. The slap was so hard that his cheek turned red. Little Aditya went inside crying and started learning shloka. Oh God! I slapped my guru's son out of anger. Now, what will happen? What will happen now? Yashwant was terrified and lost in his thoughts, but he observed that Aditya started reading with utmost concentration. Aditya complained about Yashwant slapping him on the face. Ma, ma, see how brother slapped on my face. It swelled too, and it hurts a lot. Oh my God, Yashwant, why did you slap this hard? It's hurt him so bad. His cheeks are red like apple. Ma, I warned him many a times to recite the shlokas. But he did not pay any ear to what I said and played all the time. So to bring him back on track, I had to slap him. So what? Will you slap someone so hard if he does not by heart the shloka? And you? Why don't you utter a single word? What do you expect me to say? I entrusted Aditya's responsibility to Yashwant, and he did his duty. He asked our son to recite the shlok, to which he denied. So there is no other way for a guru rather than to punish the student. One can pamper the kid in all other aspects, but not in studies. One is not a teacher if they do not discipline the student. As a teacher, one wants all the disciples to progress and achieve greater heights in life. Yashwant also did the same. You go inside. I will talk to Yashwant. While listening to their conversation, Yashwant understood his guru's intentions and remembered his father, who tried to sort the issue with love. His father wanted to see him grow and reach heights. But he never paid attention. Now he realized his mistake. Acharya, you should forgive my ignorance. I never understood your good intentions. I developed hatred upon you and always thought you are persisting me to study, but never realized it is for my bright future. Now I will study hard, Guruji. Yashwant, you should apologize to your parents, not to me. Remember, parents are our first teachers. They always wish child's good and bright future. If you become wise and cultured, you would be the one to be benefited. Without realizing this, you hated your parents. The one who wants you to achieve greater heights will fight for your good and wants to choose good and wise path. Remember, sow as you reap. Concentrate on your studies and do well in life. Acharya ji, I am indebted to you. Thank you for your lessons. From that day onwards, he followed the footsteps of his guru and completed his education within no time and returned to his village. Upon his return, he took all the responsibilities from his parents and looked after them happily forever.